welcome to this session. In this session, we will be looking at artificial bee colony algorithm. Artificial bee colony algorithm is a meta heuristic algorithm which was proposed by Karaboga in 2005. It is a swarm intelligence algorithm. Swarm intelligence has been formally defined as any attempt to design algorithms or distributed problem solving devices uh, which are inspired by the behavior of social insect colonies or other animal societies. So, one other swarm intelligence algorithm which we have so far seen is particle swarm optimization. Right? So, this is also a swarm intelligence uh, algorithm. Examples of swarms are uh, bees swarming around their hive, ant colony with ants as individual agents, flock of birds is a swarm of birds, uh, immune system is a swarm of cells and crowd is a swarm of people. So, these are examples of uh, swarms. So, any algorithm uh, which is designed with this as its inspiration is a swarm intelligence algorithm. Again, these are only examples. There can be many other uh, examples. So, the two properties of swarm intelligent behavior are self-organization and division of labor. By self-organization, we mean that the interactions are executed on the basis of purely local information without any relation to the global pattern. Right? So, the four components of self-organization are positive feedback, negative feedback, fluctuations and multiple interactions. By division of labor, we mean that the tasks that need to be performed are simultaneously performed by specialized uh, individuals. So, particle swarm optimization which we have previously uh, studied was modeled based on the social behavior of bird flocking or fish cooling. So, artificial bee colony algorithm was first proposed in uh, 2005 by uh, Dervis Karaboga. Right. Subsequently, it was published uh, in 2007 in Journal of Global Optimization. So, ever since its publication, it has been receiving increased interest from researchers both in terms of its applications as well as uh, variants of ABC algorithm that have been proposed. In 2015, Dervis Karaboga co-authored a publication in which they clarified some of the misconceptions with regard to artificial bee colony algorithm. Right. Like all other algorithms, ABC has found applications in engineering, uh, social sciences and also in business management. So, this shows the comparison of uh, TLBO and ABC. Before we move on to the algorithm, we need to first understand what are the components of honeybee swarms. So, there are three major components. One is the food source, the employed bees and the unemployed bees. So, uh, food source's value depends on its proximity, richness and ease of extraction and they can be represented with a single quantity known as profitability. So, this is similar to our solutions. So, each solution has an objective function value associated with it. right? So, the objective function value can be considered as profitability. So, what we consider as food sources will be the solutions in uh, optimization. Employed bees are currently associated with a food source. They are exploiting a food source. They contain information on distance, profitability and direction from the nest. These employed bees share the information with a certain probability to other bees. Right? So, when a bee uh, collects nectar and comes back to the hive to unload it, it has three options. One, it can either abandon the food source and thus becomes an uncommitted follower. The second is to dance in the dance area. Right? These bees perform something called as waggle dance. So, the other bees which are unemployed as of now look at this dance and they may choose to follow this particular employed bee to go to that particular food source to collect uh, more nectar. Right? So, the second option for the bees is to dance, recruit other bees and return back to the food source and keep collecting the nectar from the food source. The third option is not to dance but to continue to forge at the food source. In this case, it does not uh, recruit any other bees, but it continues to forge at the food source and collect the nectar and come back to the hive. Right? So, that is the employed bee. So, there are two type of unemployed forgers. One is onlookers and the other one is scout. So, these onlookers watch the waggle dance. They may choose to follow that particular bee and they start searching for a food source. Whereas, scouts do not necessarily watch the waggle dance, but starts exploring around the nest spontaneously. Right. So, we have basically uh, three components. One is food source, employed forgers and unemployed forgers. Artificial bee colony algorithm consists of three phases. One is the employed bee phase, onlooker bee phase and the scout bee phase. In the employed bee phase, the employed bees try to identify a better food source than the one they are currently associated with. Right. In terms of optimization, we will be generating a new solution using a partner solution in the employed bee phase and then we will be performing a greedy selection. So, as you know greedy selection, uh, in greedy selection we will be accepting a new solution if it is better than the 
current solution. In onlooker B phase, we will be generating a new solution and performing a greedy search. So, this is similar to employed B phase. Only thing is that in employed B phase, every B associated with a particular food source was generating a new solution. Here, we will select a food source based on a probability related to the nectar amount. Right? So, it is not like every food source will be used to generate a new solution. In the scout B phase, the exhausted food source is abandoned. So, in terms of optimization, we will be discarding a particular solution and we will be generating a new solution. A major difference between many of the other algorithms which we have covered in this course and ABC is the use of the term fitness. In most of the algorithms which we have discussed so far, the term fitness directly corresponded to the objective function value. So, if there are two solutions S1 and S2 right? and if the objective function value of S1 was 10 and S2 was 5, right? so then the fitness of solution 1 was 10 and the fitness of solution 2 was 5. So, the objective function directly corresponded to the fitness function value right? and if we are solving a minimization problem, then solution S2 is better than solution S1. Right. So, objective function directly corresponded to our fitness function value. That is not the case in artificial bee colony optimization. Right. In artificial bee colony algorithm, uh, the fitness is related to the objective function using this relation. Right. So, if the objective function value is greater than or equal to 0, then the fitness is 1 by 1 plus f. And if the objective function value is less than 0, then the fitness is given by 1 plus absolute of f. Right? So, this graph shows the variation of fitness function value on the y axis and the objective function value on the x axis. We can see as the objective function value increases, the fitness value actually decreases. Right? So, if we consider two solutions, let us say this is S3 and this is S4. Right? So, if we are solving a minimization problem, we would have taken S4 as a better solution because it has lower objective function value. Now, since we are working with the fitness value which is inversely related, we are supposed to take a solution which has maximum fitness. So, given two solutions, if I need to perform a greedy selection, I will have to select a solution which has higher fitness, not lower fitness, a higher fitness. In the other algorithm, it was lower fitness because objective function value directly corresponded to the fitness function value, whereas in ABC, the objective function value and the fitness function value are inversely related. Right? So, if I am solving a minimization problem, I will have to select a solution which is actually having a higher fitness. Right? So, that is what is shown over here, greedy selection to update the search. So, if the fitness function of the new solution is greater than the fitness of a particular solution, then we will replace. So, x is equal to x nu, f is equal to f nu. So, this is the selection criteria that the fitness of the new solution has to be better than the fitness of the solution which is either undergoing the employed B phase or the onlooker B phase. Right? If this condition is not satisfied, like if the fitness of the new solution is not better than the fitness of the existing solution, that is if the fitness of new solution is less than the fitness of the old solution, then we retain the same values for the decision variable and the objective function value. So, this is a major difference between many of the algorithms which we have studied and ABC algorithm. Right? So, let us actually see what is uh, employed B phase. Right? So, let us say I have uh, 5 food source F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5. Right? These are my decision variables or population members. This, these are uh, the decision variables that we have. Let us say if I have a 3 variable problem, then these are the values. Let us say 2, 8, 7, 9, 3, 2, 6, 8, 5. 3, 2, 5, 7, 9, 1. So, these are our solution vectors which we have been calling population members so far. Right? So, corresponding to each of this solution, we will have a objective function value. Right? So, objective function value I am indicating by F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5. These are the objective function values. Based on objective function value, I can also calculate the fitness value right? based on the formula which was shown in the previous slide. Right? So, these are food sources, 5 food sources. Food sources are nothing but the decision variables. Right? So, here we have shown it for 3 variable. For each food source, we have an objective function and the fitness function value. Corresponding to each food source, in the employed B phase, there are Bs. Right? So, this is uh, let me say E1, 
employed B1, employed B2, employed B3, employed B4 and employed B5. So, in ABC algorithm we need to fix something called as swam size, right. So, the number of food sources, the number of employed bees and the number of onlooker bees is S by 2, right. So, this is S by 2, S by 2, S by 2. So, if I fix the swam size as 10, then the number of food sources is 5, the number of employed bee is 5 and the number of uh, onlooker bee is 5, right. So, it is S by 2. So, in employed B phase what will happen is this uh, B is exploiting this particular food source. The first B is exploiting the first food source, the second B is exploiting the second food source, the third B is exploiting the third food source, the fourth B is exploiting the fourth food source and the fifth B is exploiting the fifth food source, right. What is the meaning of exploiting food source? We will come to it a little bit later, but this is what is happening in the employed B phase that I have 5 food source, I have 5 B's, so each B is going to exploit a particular food source, right. So, that is our onlooker uh, B phase. So, every B is going to exploit a particular food source, that is one thing that you need to keep in mind uh, for the employed B phase. In onlooker B phase, again I have the same 5 food source F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5. Again these are decision variables, I have let us say some decision variable, let us say 2, 3, 4, 1, 8, 9, uh, 7, 2, 6, 3, 8, 5, 2, 7, 9. Right. Uh, so, these are food source. So, my food source in the employed B phase and the onlooker B phase may or may not be the same. So, as we do an example, you will uh, realize it that uh, why I am saying that uh, the food sources may be same or not. So, uh, for each food source which corresponds to a solution, we also have the objective function value denoted by F1 to F5 and we also have the fitness value, fitness 1, fitness 2, fitness 3 fitness 4 and fitness 5 and I also have 5 onlooker bees. So, let me call it as O1, O2, O3, O4 and O5. So, remember in employed bee phase every bee did exploit the food source, in onlooker bee phase that is not necessary, right. So, first we will start with onlooker B 1 So, onlooker B based on a particular condition may or may not exploit food source, let us say it exploits the food source. We will uh, exactly see what is the condition a little bit later, right, but as of now let us superficially look into what is onlooker B phase, right. So, onlooker B will exploit food source 1 based on some condition, if the condition is met it will exploit, if the condition or is not met it will not exploit food source 1, but it will exploit food source 2. So, let us to begin with, let us assume that this condition is satisfied. So, onlooker B1 is exploiting food source 1. For the second onlooker B, let us uh, assume that this whatever that condition is not satisfied, right. So, since this condition is not satisfied, onlooker B2 will exploit the food source 3. Remember, this did not happen in employed B phase. In the employed B phase, each employed B was exploiting a particular food source. There was a one to one correspondence. Here there is not that correspondence, right. So, if this condition happens to be true, then this will exploit it, otherwise this will not exploit it. Let us say O3 uh, is not meeting the condition of food source 4 as well as it is not meeting the condition of food source 5, right. So, now if we see we have exploited all the 5 food sources, 3 has not completed the onlooker B phase because it did not uh, find a food source, right. So, in that case we will again start from F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. So, we will formally see it in a detailed way subsequently, right. So, this is essentially the onlooker B phase and the employed B phase. So, in ABC algorithm we have a unique feature uh, which keeps track of the number of failures. So, whenever we use a solution to generate a new solution, if we are generating a solution which is better, right, then the new solution is obviously taken inside the population because of the greedy selection. But if a solution is not able to generate a better solution, then we keep a track of the number of failures, right. Let us now formally see what is employed B phase. So, the number of employed B is equal to the number of food sources. In this, all the solutions get an opportunity to generate a new solution, right. So, how do we generate a new solution? It is based on a partner, right. Uh, obviously, the partner and the current solution should not be the same, right. And this is the relation that is used to generate. So, the new solution is generated by modifying 
a randomly selected variable. So, remember it is a randomly selected variable, not all the variables are to be changed, but only one variable has to be changed, right. So, this equation if you see xj corresponds to the jth decision variable which was randomly selected, right, jth variable. This was this jth variable was randomly selected, xj is the jth variable of the current solution which is undergoing the employed B phase and xpj is the jth variable of the p solution where p is the partner. Again partner has to be randomly selected, right. In this relation phi is a random number between minus 1 and 1. Remember it is not r which we were using to denote a random number generated between 0 and 1, but here the random number has to be between minus 1 and 1. So, now this variable may or may not be in bounds. So, if it is in bounds well and good, if it is not in bounds we will again employ the corner bounding strategy. So, the corner bounding strategy is I have a lower bound, I have a upper bound. If a solution is anywhere between the lower and upper bound, then we do not need to employ bounding strategy. But if it violates the lower bound, we bring it back to the lower bound. And if a solution is violates the upper bound, we bring it back to the upper bound, right. So, this is the bounding strategy which we have been using in all techniques. So, let us quickly see an example to generate a solution. Let the solution which is undergoing the employed B phase be 2, 1, 6, 9. It is a 4 variable, right. So, 2, 1, 6, 9 and the partner which is selected from the population or the food source, let it be 0, 4, 7, 2, right. So, the partner has been randomly selected, x is the solution which is undergoing the employed B phase and let me randomly select the variable 2. So, it means that we are going to change the variable 2, right. And if you remember that equation, it required a phi value which was supposed to be between minus and 1 and 1. So, let us assume that the phi value is minus 0.1. There would not be any change in this. So, that is why we have retained 2, 6 and 9. Remember the value of only one decision variable is changed for generating a new solution, right. So, here the equation was xj, right. So, xj is 1 plus phi, phi was minus 1, xj minus xjp. Right. So, p denoted the partner. So, the value of partner is 4 over here. Right. So, the value 1 and the value 4 are used to generate a new solution 1.3. If this 1.3 is within bounds, we directly take it into the solution. But if this 1.3 is not within the bounds, we bound it using the corner bounding strategy. So, this is how a solution is generated. The procedure to generate a new solution either in the employed B phase or in the onlooker B phase is the same. The way we generate a solution in the scout phase is different, we will come to that a little bit later. But for employed B phase and the onlooker B phase, the procedure to generate a particular so new solution is the same, right. We select a random partner, we select a random variable and then modify just one variable to generate the new solution. Okay. So, once we have generated this new solution within the bounds, we need to evaluate the objective function value. So, that is done using the objective function. Right. Once we have determined the objective function value, we can use the relation to find out the fitness of the newly generated solution. So, we will perform a greedy selection over here between the current solution and the newly generated solution. Whichever solution is better survives the greedy selection procedure. Right. As we had mentioned a little bit earlier, we will be using a counter known as trial. The name of the counter is trial. This will be used to track the number of failures encountered by each solution. So, each solution has a trial associated with, right. If you have 5 solutions, you will have 5 values of trial. So, every time a solution encounters a failure, its trial value is increased by 1, right. At any phase, by looking at the trial value, we will be able to say that for how many times that particular solution did generate a new solution, but that new solution was not better. So, it gives a measure of how many times the solution has failed to generate a better solution. So, we will be having this trial vector. If the new solution is inferior, we will increase the trial uh, counter by 1 or if the new solution is better, right. So, the new solution will come uh, into the population and since this is a new solution which has come into the population, the trial is set to 0. This trial vector will be handled in the same way in the onlooker B phase also. So, we will generate a solution. If the solution is good, we will take it inside the population and reset the trial. If the newly generated solution is bad, then we will update the counter by increasing its value by 1. So, it will keep track of the number of failures. The trial vector keeps a count of the total number of failures irrespective of whether uh, the failure happened in the employed B phase or the onlooker B phase. 
So now let us look at the pseudocode of the employed B phase. Right. So in employed B phase, we know that every solution has to undergo this employed B phase. Right. So this for i equal to 1 to n p. Right. n p is number of food source or the number of employed bees or the number of onlookers bees, which is s by 2. Right. S is the swam size. So we have this external loop. Right. So we are going to repeat whatever is inside this for loop uh, for n p times. Right. So what we are going to do is we are randomly going to select a partner p such that i is not equal to p right so because if i is equal to p this equation this value will become zero so the effort that we are putting in to generate a new solution would be meaningless so we need to ensure that the partner is not the same solution okay. and then we need to randomly select a variable j so it does not matter if your problem is uh, having four decision variable or 100 decision variable or 10000 decision variable we will be modifying only one variable to generate a new solution right this equation which we are using is more of exploitation rather than exploration right this is because we are modifying only one variable and very likely the new solution is in the vicinity of the current solution right so once we modify this we need to apply this equation and generate a new value for the jth variable and then we need to check for the bounds so if it is within bounds well and good if it is not in the bounds we will have to bound the solution once we bound the solution we are ready to evaluate the objective function and also fitness because ABC algorithm works on the basis of fitness uh, and not directly on the objective function value. So now we have two solutions. So the solution which we generated and the solution that is undergoing the employed B phase. Right. So we will do a greedy search. So if the fitness of the new solution is greater than the fitness of the ith solution, then we will accept the new solution. Since we are accepting the new solution, the trial counter has to be set to 0. Right. If this condition is not satisfied, right, if the fitness of the new solution is less than the fitness of the ith solution, then we will increase the trial counter and discard the new solution. So here what we are saying is the old solution is retained, but we also have a track of how many times that solution has failed. Right. So this is the pseudocode for the employed B phase. As you can see, it is fairly simple to uh, implement. Right. So this is the generation phase wherein uh, we are generating a new solution and this is the selection phase wherein we are selecting a better solution. So just to avoid any confusion, this is not actually fitness function, this is objective function. Remember particle swarm optimization, genetic algorithm, teaching learning based optimization, differential evolution. In all four of this, objective function value is the same as fitness function value, right? So that's why we were using it interchangeably, right? We sometimes call it objective function and we sometimes call this as fitness function, particularly since we were dealing with unconstrained optimization problem. ABC explicitly uses fitness function, which is not the same as objective function, right? So both of them are uh, different, right? So what we are supposed to provide here is what is the objective function? So once we know the objective function, right? So when we say objective function, it is like this function f is equal to let us say x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square, right? So this is what we mean by the objective function, right? So that has to be passed. So uh, as and when a solution is received, the objective function value is calculated and ABC specifies explicit mechanism to calculate the fitness, right? So in ABC alone, we have this thing that uh, objective function is not the same as uh, fitness function, right? So just to avoid uh, any kind of confusion, we want to just make sure that you understand that it is objective function over here and not fitness function. So remember in the onlooker B phase, we said there is a condition which has to be met for a B to exploit a particular food source, right? Uh, we know the fitness of the each food source. So for each food source, we calculate something called as a probability. So the probability is given by this formula, probability of the ith solution is 0.9 times the fitness of the ith solution divided by the maximum fitness in the food source plus 0.1, right? So the probability of all the solutions are to be determined before we undertake the onlooker B phase, right? So here we can interpret that a solution which has a higher fitness value will have higher probability. Right? And uh, as you will realize that a fitter solution has a greater probability of undergoing uh, onlooker B phase for more than once. The onlooker B phase is supposed to generate NP new solutions where NP is again S by 2 where S is the swarm size user defined parameter. Uh, if the swarm size is 10, uh, we need to generate 5 new solutions. These solutions may or may not be better than the solution used to generate the new solutions. but 
we need to definitely generate five solutions five five attempts need to be made the attempts may be successful or may fail but five attempts have to be made so this is the figure similar to what we have seen so in this case we have uh, five onlooker b right o onlooker b1 onlooker b2 onlooker b3 four and five and similarly we have five food source f1 to f5 since we know the food source which is nothing but the solution we can calculate its objective function since we know the objective function we can calculate the fitness now that we know fitness we can calculate this probability let the probability calculated for food source be 0.3 uh, for food source 2 0.7 0.6 for food source 3 0.1 for food source 4 and 1 for food source 5 since the denominator here is maximum fitness and since we are calculating this probability for every solution at least one of these food source will have a probability value of 1 right so now we have five onlooker bees we have five food source uh, we have the probability associated with it so the condition that is to be used to check if a particular onlooker b will exploit a particular food source is given over here that for every onlooker b will generate a random number if this random number happens to be less than the probability of the food source then that particular onlooker b will exploit that particular food source if that condition is not satisfied we will move on to the next food source for the same onlooker b right so let us see a small example let us say for onlooker b1 uh, the random number which was generated is 0.6 so in this case 0.6 is not less than 0.3 right so this condition is not satisfied so onlooker b1 is now exploring the second food source remember from when we moved from one food source to the other food source this 0.4 changed the random number is to be changed so here if we see 0.4 is less than 0.7 right so it will use this particular food source to generate a new solution Right. So, this condition is satisfied. So, we need to generate a new solution. Generating new solution is similar to uh, what we discussed in employed B phase that for F2 we will have to randomly select a partner from 1 to 5. We will have to randomly select a variable and then apply that equation which we have seen right so that we get a new solution. So, once we get a new solution we need to check the bounds for it. If it is within the bounds well and good otherwise we need to bound it once we have the bounded solution we need to perform a greedy selection right greedy selection between the newly generated solution x and the solution f2 so if x happens to be better than f2 then x will uh, be taken inside the uh, population right and the trial will be set to zero because trial is a counter which keeps track of the number of failures right and since this solution is entering the population for the first time and has not been used to generate any new solution the trial value has to be set to 0 else if the new solution was not better than f2 right in that case we discard this new solution and increase the trial by 1 right remember there are 5 trial values so we need to the increase the trial value corresponding to food source 2 because that is the food source which failed to generate a new solution right so this is for onlooker b1 so now that we have completed for onlooker b1 we need to go for the next b right? so here we are keeping track of which onlooker b exploited which food source so in this case onlooker b1 has exploited food source 2 right so now onlooker b1 is over so now for onlooker b2 we again generate a random number so let the random number be 0.7 so this onlooker b2 will not exploit the food source f3 right then again we generate a random number let us say we generate 0.2 and the probability of this solution is 0 0.1 right so again that is not satisfied right so we go on to uh, generating another random number let us say r is equal to 0.5 in this case we get the relation is satisfied right so onlooker b2 exploits food source 5 so what do we mean by exploits food source 5 we will randomly select one partner we will randomly decide on a particular variable, we will generate a new solution right. If the new solution is within the bounds well and good otherwise we will bound it and then we will perform a greedy selection right. Once we do the greedy selection we will be able to know whether the new solution is better or not. If it is better we will take it inside the population and reset the trial to 0 else we will increase the trial by 1. So now we have completed onlooker B phase for the second onlooker right. So onlooker B2 exploited F5. 
So now let's move on to onlooker B3. Again, we need to generate a random number 0.1. So we'll generate a new solution using F1 and one of the randomly selected population member. So OB3 completes the onlooker B phase. Similarly, we tried for OB4. So here the random number we generate is 0.9. So this does not satisfy the condition. So we move on to the next food source. So here second time we generate a random number which happens to be less than 0.6. So again we need to generate a new solution. We need to bound the solution. We will perform a greedy selection. If the solution is better we will take it inside the population, reset the trial. Else we will increase the trial counter by 1 because this particular solution failed to generate a new solution. Right? So uh, OB4 undergoes F3. Right? So then onlooker B5. Again, we generate a random number. Let us say the random number is 0.7. This condition is not met. So, we generate another random number. So, here the relation will be satisfied and again we will generate a new solution. So, this way all the 5 Bs have completed the onlooker B phase. right? So, here if we see F5 has come twice, F1 has come once and F2 and F3 has come once, F4 has never been used. Right. This, this is unlike the employed B phase wherein every solution was used to generate a new solution. Right. So that is the major difference between employed B phase and onlooker B phase. So this shows the solutions which were used for every uh, onlooker B. So now let us quickly consolidate whatever we discussed in onlooker B phase using a uh, pseudo code. Right. So initially we set m is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1. So n is going to correspond to our food source m is going to correspond to our onlooker uh, b right you will see why we are initializing m to 0 in a little while so we are supposed to generate np new solutions in this example we are taking phi so we need to generate phi new solutions so we use a while condition over here initially we have not generated any new solution so that's why we had initialized m to be 0 right so this condition will be satisfied till we don't get phi solutions so that way we'll ensure that we are doing this loop with whatever is there within this while loop for np number of times so first what we need to do is we need to generate a random number r right if the random number r is less than probability uh, of n so initially n is 1 so first we are checking the random number which we generated with the probability of f1 so if that condition is satisfied we'll select a random partner we will select a random variable and modify the jth variable using this equation which we have been using and then since we have generated a new value for the decision variable we need to check whether it is in bounds if it is in bounds it is uh, well and good else we will use the corner bounding strategy to bound, bound it after bounding it we need to evaluate the objective function since ABC works with the fitness we need to calculate the fitness of the new solution once again objective function in ABC is not the same as fitness, right? it is inversely related. Uh, so we need to calculate the fitness. If the solution which we generated is better, that is if the fitness of new solution is better than the fitness of the nth solution, right? then we need to accept the solution into the population and set trial to 0, else we will increase the trial counter by 1. Right? So this way we have made a first attempt, right? so we increase the counter of m by 1. But if this condition was not satisfied, let us say if this condition is not satisfied, then if you remember the figure which we saw a little while earlier, we need to move on to the next food source. So n is equal to n plus 1. So the second time we are again generating a random number and checking the probability this condition for the second food source. So if you carefully analyze it might happen as it happened in the previous example, 4 m becomes 5 because we require 5 new solutions. Right? Before m becomes 5, this n can go above 5. Right? If this n goes above 5, then we do not have any food source. So in that case, what we did was reinitialize it. Right? So that is what we say, reset n equal to 1 if the value of np is greater than np. So you can refer to the example we discussed to further understand why we are resetting 1. Since this can happen, we reset the value of n to 1. So now we have completed the employed B phase as well as the onlooker B phase. So if you think about it, we started with a swarm size of let us say 10, then the number of food source is 5, the number of employed Bs are 5 and the number of onlooker Bs are 5. Right? So in employed B phase we generated 5 new solutions, in onlooker B phase we generated 5 new solutions. Again as discussed previously, this is not fitness function, this is objective function. 
because ABC has different meaning for objective function and fitness function. Whereas in all other algorithms for unconstrained optimization problem, objective function was the same as fitness function. Again, if you compare it this with our meta heuristic techniques, we have a generation phase over here and a selection phase over here. Right? So, like other algorithms, we need to specify the number of cycles or the termination criteria for ABC algorithm and we also need to specify the SWAM size. Right? So, if we know the SWAM size, we can calculate the number of food sources as S by 2. The number of food sources is equal to the number of onlooker bees and the number of onlooker bees is the same as the number of employed bee phase. In addition to these two parameters, we also need to specify a parameter called as limit. Right? So, it is an integer value. So, as we have seen that every solution is associated with an individual trial counter. So, for every solution we had a trial counter that is not set by user, but that is just keeping a track of how many times a solution is failing to generate a better solution. Right? So, this limit is an integer value. So, if the value of trial for a particular solution is greater than the limit which has been set by the user, then the solution can potentially enter the scout phase. So, not all the solutions will undergo scout phase. right? Only those solutions which have failed more than the specified number of times. Let us assume that I have set a limit value of phi. So, in that case, the solutions which have failed more than phi times can potentially enter scout phase. Not all of them will be entering, but uh, only one of them would be entering. right? So, we will look at it in a little bit later. Usually, the value of limit is given by NP into D, where D is the dimension of the problem and NP is swarm size by 2 or the number of food source. Right? So, this is the most commonly uh, used value for limit. Further research has been done on how to optimally set this limit. Uh, if you are interested, you can look into this. We will not uh, go into detail of that, but uh, usually the limit value is set to be NP into number of decision variables. Now that we have the limit parameter, we can look into scout phase. So, solutions which have their trial values greater than limit are the candidates to be discarded. right? So, only those solutions whose trial is greater than the limit can undergo scout phase. Right? So, one solution with its trial greater than limit is replaced with new random solution. So, you may have many solutions, but only one of them is replaced. So, that solution is totally discarded and a newly generated random solution is included in the uh, population. Right? Since a new solution is generated, the trial counter for the new, new solution will be reset to 0. So, in every iteration or cycle, scout phase may be encountered or may not be encountered. Right? So, it occurs only when the trial counter of at least one solution is greater than limit. So, if your limit is let us say 10 and you have 5 solutions whose trial counter is 2, 8, 7, 9, 3. Right? So, it indicates that the first solution failed for 2 times to generate a new solution. Right? Similarly, the other values can be interpreted. Right? In this case, the scout phase will not be encountered because all of this are less than 10. Right? The scout phase may or may not be encountered in an iteration that depends upon the trial vector and the limit value. Right? So, uh, this scout phase is performed on only one solution. Let us say uh, instead of this, I had trial vector as this. Right? So, now when I complete the onlooker B phase, two solutions are exceeding the limit. Right? So, even then only one of them would be replaced. So, that is why it is performed only on one solution with trial count greater than limit. What can happen in scout phase is that the best solution Right, can have a very high limit. Right? Let us say we encountered a best solution and let us say that best solution is not able to generate better solutions right? either in the employed B phase or in the onlooker B phase. It is continuously encountering failures right? and the number of failures is higher than the limit. Right? So, it can potentially get eliminated. The best solution can potentially get eliminated from the population. Right? So, that is why before we enter the scout phase, we will me memorize the best solution. So, even if it enters scout phase and it is discarded, we will not lose that solution right? because we have stored that best solution in a particular variable. Now, let us look at the pseudocode of scout B phase. Right? So, we need to identify the food source whose trial is greater than the limit. Right? Uh, we need to replace that the entire solution. Once we replace the entire solution, we need to evaluate its subjective function and assign the appropriate fitness function. Remember, there is no greedy selection over here right? because that solution which has been selected to be 
discarded from the population has not been able to generate new solutions. So, it may happen that the new solution which we are generating over here can be actually bad than the solution that is being discarded. Right? So, we are not employing a greedy selection strategy over here. So, that is how uh, scout B phase is different from onlooker B phase and employed B phase. One is that we change all the decision vari variable values whereas in employed B phase and onlooker B phase we were changing only one decision variable value. right? And secondly, both in employed B phase and onlooker B phase we employed a greedy selection strategy whereas in scout B phase we will directly take the newly generated solution into the population, we will not employ a greedy selection strategy. Similar to our previous discussion, right? this is not fitness function, but this is objective function. So, let us look at three cases that can be encountered in the scout phase. Right? Let us consider these are our five solutions F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 and these are their respective uh, failures. Right? So, solution 4 has encountered six failures so far and let our limit value be phi. Right? So, in this case these four solutions solution F1, F2, F3 and F5 have a trial value which is less than or equal to phi. So, they will not definitely undergo scout B phase. Right? So, the only solution uh, which can undergo scout B phase is this one because it has a trial value greater than phi. So, in case 2 if we see there are three solutions F1, F3 and F5 whose trial is greater than phi. So, one of these three solutions will undergo the scout phase. The one that I will undergo is F3 because it has the maximum number of failures. So, in case 1 there was only one solution, so there was no problem. In case 2 there were multiple solutions which violated uh, this limit parameter. right? So, in that case we will select the one which has failed the maximum number of times. So, this is also violating this condition, this is also violating the condition, but these two uh, food sources will not undergo the scout phase because in the scout phase only one solution has to be discarded. Right? So, in case 3, these three solutions have identical trial values 888. Right? So, all of them are uh, greater than 5 which is our trial limit. So, in this case we need to randomly select one of these solutions. Right. So, all of this have the maximum number of trials. So, we will select randomly one solution because they have the same number of maximum uh, trials which is also greater than phi. Right. So, this is all, all of these are greater than phi. So, any one of this can be selected. These are the three cases in which we will have to decide which particular solution undergoes the scout phase. So, the entire pseudocode of ABC can be uh, given as this thing that we need to first initialize a random population within the bounds of the decision variable. So, the bounds should be known right? and we need to have a fitness function so that we can calculate the objective function. right? Fitness function as in like objective function is required and then we will use the relationship between objective function and the fitness function uh, to calculate the fitness of every solution. right? And then we need to set the trial counter of all food sources equal to 0. So, this trial counter will keep track of the number of failures. So, if the number of food sources is phi, trial is a vector of phi elements. ABC is an iterative technique, right? so we will have to perform the steps of ABC multiple times. It is either known as the cycles or we can call it as iterations. So, we will have to perform it for T iterations. We will have to first perform the employed B phase on all the food sources. right? And then we will have to determine the probability of each food source and then we perform on looker B phase to generate NP food source. right? In employed B phase all the food sources are going to definitely be used to generate a new solution that is not the case in onlooker B phase, but still we need to generate uh, NP food sources. Once we are done with that we need to memorize the best food source. This is an important step because the best food source can be lost in scout phase. right? So, we need to memorize the best food source and we need to check if trial of any food source is greater than limit. We need to first determine if uh, the scout phase is to be performed by using the trial vector and the limit value which has been set by the user. Right? If the condition is met then we perform the scout B phase of the exhausted food source. So, over here it has to be uh, objective function right? and not the fitness function. So, this completes the pseudocode of ABC. So, with that we will conclude this session. Thank you.